Hello, Tamara here from Posh Cat Crafts. Thanks for crafting with me today. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how to apply melted beeswax to paper flowers. I really like this technique as it adds a really nice finish, makes your flowers more durable, and with the use of mica powder, gives them a shimmer. So what tools will you need? You'll need beeswax. I have two colours here. I have clear and natural. If you go for the natural, it will give your flowers more of a vintage feel. They come in pellet for form, like this, which makes it easier to melt and quicker to melt. You will need a melting pot. My melting pot is from Ranger. Unfortunately, they've discontinued these. Alternatively, you could use a simple small tin foil tray, a pair of tweezers and a heat gun. So you would put your beeswax into the tray, hold them with your tweezers and then melt. use your heat gun underneath to melt the wax. Or you could use a wax melt pot for hair removal. I've just had a look on Amazon and you can pick one of these up quite cheaply. But make sure that you get one with adjustable heat settings as the melting point for beeswax is 63.3 centigrade or 146 Fahrenheit. Never leave your wax unattended. Wax can get very hot and it can bubble over. You will also need a craft mat. As I said, a pair of tweezers, your materials that you're going to dip into wax. I've got a variety of different things here. I've got some paper leaves, some paper flowers, some die cut flowers that I've inked and shaped ready. And these ones are ones that I've done already. Now with these ones what I've done is I dipped them in separately and then added them together after they would dried. I added some stamens and it just gives a really nice shimmer. I've also on the edges I've put some gold gilding wax as well. Oops. Okay, let's get started. I've already pre-melted my wax. Now, as I don't know if you can see in my wax there, I have some mica powders already in there. That was from a previous melt that I did. Now, if you wanted to get rid of that, you would have to then clean out your pot. This one is quite a nice one because this uh, is a removable pot so it's quite easy to um, remove. Okay, so let's get started. I would suggest using an older craft mat because once you get wax onto your sheet it is quite difficult to get rid of and uh, it gets a little bit sticky so I would suggest that. As you can see my tweezers are pretty gunged up. I mean they're easier to take, that's easy to take off because you can just put it onto your melting pot and it just melts off easy. Alternatively you could use um, a brush. Uh, again I have one here and um, which is just what I use uh, if I'm coating canvases. You would just stick it onto your uh, melt pot and then the wax that's already on on the bristles will melt and um, as you can see it's starting to melt now but I'm not going to use that technique today but that's another technique if you would like to okay so I'm going to start with my already handmade paper flowers you could use mulberry flowers if you prefer as well and give it a go and see what the effects you get. This one I've just sprayed with some um, colour bloom and uh, just to give it a little bit of a, a green tinge to go on my project. This is my project that I'm going to stick them onto. So, all you do is you hold them. Now, I would the technique I would use is try not to get this part here, try not to get any melted wax onto that because if you use hot glue it does take longer for the flower to stick to adhere because the hot glue will then melt the wax 
so if you can try and leave a, a, a little round circle on the bottom right so all you do is you would just place your flower in now I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move you over and I'm going to zoom you down so that you can see Gonna have to come right over. There we are. Now, that's my light there that you can see. I'll just move that over a little bit. There we go. So it's not, you haven't got that glare. There we go. That's a little bit better. There we are. Right, I'll move that bit more into shot. Now, as you can see, the beeswax is soaking into the petals of the flower. It doesn't take very long. There we go. Right. Then all you do is you pick it up and I give it a little bit of a shake. There we are. So that's what it looks like. It doesn't look very uh, very good until it dries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it there and I'm just going to pan you out again. So move it over. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Now you can see. Okay, so just give it a bit of a tap on the side just to get the excess wax off. It will just drip off. And then what what that is doing is that if you just take it straight out of the wax, the wax seems to pull in the bottom of the leaf, uh, sorry, the bottom of the petals and then you will get, um, it, it just doesn't look too good. Now, alternative what you could do with that is you could then use your heat gun and melt the, the wax that's in the crevices of your flower over your melt pot and that will get rid of them. Okay, so I think I've got quite a bit of the wax off. Now as you can see, I've got a little tiny bit of wax on there, but that's that's okay. That won't um, won't matter too much. Okay, my flower has dried now. I'm not too happy with it because I have a build-up of wax on some of the petals. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly have give it a blast with my heat gun to melt the wax so that the wax then drips off the petals and I get the effect that I want. Okay, so that's some of the wax come off. Give it a little bit of a shake and then you will get some of the drips off as well. And then put it to side to dry. You may have to do that a few times to get your desired effect. Okay, let's do let's do a paper flower. So this is just a flower that I've uh, I've die cut. I've then inked with some distress inks and then I've stuck it together. You don't have to stick your flowers together before you put it into the the beeswax. You can do them one at a time if you prefer. Just for a quickness I've added them all together. Also if you add stamens to the centre of your flowers you can dip them in with the flower as well or you can leave them, you can put them in afterwards like I have done with these flowers here as you can see. Okay, So again all you would do because this is a bigger flower you may have to do a it's like a sweep motion so that you get you coat all the flowers and again if you can help it try not to get the bottom okay right that's some of the flowers anyway you can shape them afterwards so don't be too worried if they lose their shape. Now, as this is quite a big flower, it will gather a lot of the 
beeswax. What it also do does is mute your colour of what you put, whatever you put on there as well. But as you can see, it's kind of made it more mute. Again, just give it a tap to get rid of the excess wax. Beeswax has a slight smell. It's not an offensive smell. It is it's quite pleasant actually. Okay, right. Just gather your petals up. Just pinch them in a little bit so that they get a bit more of a shape. There. As you can see with the max sorry the wax melting sorry the wax drying you can see there's quite a bit of wax on that petal there so I will have to give that a blast with my heat gun because there is far too much on there I don't know if you can see on that petal there but that's easily rectified and as you can see, the wax has melted off the hot the glue. But that, again, is just something that happens. And again, you can just stick them back together when you're when you've finished. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one there. Again, here's my heat gun. Okay, that's now come apart but again not to worry we can stick them back together once they've dried do be careful because this wax is very hot and it will burn so do be very very careful Right, okay, I'm quite happy with that effect. That's quite good. I've got the other petal now just to um, melt so that I get rid of the excess wax. Okay, I'm quite happy with that effect. There. and it's quite even now lovely right well I'm just going to put that down to dry now these ones are they're very nearly dry so um, I'm just going to shape them there we go and then they should retain that shape and really lovely effect as well is when when the, it has dried the wax you get this lovely cracked effect which when you add your mica powders really clings to the cracked parts of your petals and that just adds makes your flowers look a lot more realistic so There we are. I'm hoping you can see this. Excellent. Just excellent. There we go. Right. So there's those ones done. So I've done two flowers, and two mulberry type flowers and some die cut flowers that I have there you can also do your leaves which uh, I've got um, some various ones here so again you just dip in these ones I've used some what have I used to colour these I've used some Tuttle Angels colour paint to colour these ones um, 
I've not used them before so um, I'm quite liking them actually they're quite nice I've got a few different colors in those again I've had them for a while and haven't had any time to play with them yet so again I'm going to use my heat gun with that as well because I have got some raised bits of wax that I particularly don't like so I'm going to let that one dry for a little while and I'm just going to do the next one I might dry, um, heat gun these off camera because otherwise this is going to get far too long and just give it a tap to get rid of your excess it's quite late here at the mo um, t tonight it's um, near enough 11 o'clock and I've, everybody's gone to bed so it's just me and the dogs and I'm just having a play I've been with my friend uh, Lou Withers today she had a a show uh, on her chanda so I was with her today so always good fun I do love Lou so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, I turn my milk pot off and move it to the side so that I can then just position my flowers onto my project but before I do that I have to show you the mica powder now it can be any mica powder I actually find the the mica powder that is a neutral colour should I say this one has got a tinge of gold in it I mean you're not going to get that on on camera but that one's got a tin, tinge of gold you can go for the darker colours you just get a different effect really just have a play and see what works best for you you will need a special brush I say a special brush it's just an, um, a natural brush that you just use for mica powders and this one is um, a perfect pearls this is what one I've had for years again that I've uh, had when I've bought my perfect, perfect pearls from Ranger and I only use this for mica powder as you can see there's still some left on the brush okay you will need to wait for your flowers to properly cure so that they're quite hard now this one is, is pretty dry now so what you do is you just I normally just dip my brush into the powder and then just tap off the excess onto the lid and then you can just pick it up from the lid okay now I'm going to bring you in a little bit because I think this is quite important to see. So, oops. there we go, maybe not that far. Um, let me just have a look to see if I have got. Mm, this. Right, this one might be better. There we go. I think it's the uh, craft mat is making the camera. There we go. That's a little bit better. There we go. Unfortunately, you can't see the. There, that's a bit better. There. Right, okay, so just dip your brush into the powder and then you just sweep it on. Right. So, you just then, again, just swirl your brush around. Now, one that I had, I'm going to try, let's try a different colour. Let's go with... Should we have copper? Is that colour more of a, like a red? 
or should we go for a different colour? If you hold on just a moment, I'll go and have a look, see if I can find my other Michael powders. What have we got in here? Um, we have a pink. I was actually looking for a yellow. Mm. Let's have a look. Nope. Okay, let's go with the green. Let's have a look what the green looks like. No, I tell you what, this is. I've just found a lovely colour here. This is like a turquoise. Or teal. There. Look at that. Alright, let's have a go at that. And we'll put it on this flower. Right, so this is something I've not tried before. Oh, and I must admit, I'm quite liking that. Especially on this green tinged flower. cleaned up here and then when I come back we'll put my um, flowers onto my project and then hopefully we'll see this finished so see you in a minute right as promised I've come back to show you my finished project I've added my me uh, melted beeswax flowers um, here as you can see you can just about see it there they are quite rigid now that um, yeah, they have dried so they should stand up to quite a bit I've added some flowers that haven't had uh, beeswax on only because that is a fabric flower and I wasn't sure how the fabric was going to take the beeswax so that experiment I'll leave for another day I've then added a sentiment a little resin angel down there that I've um, painted and then added some gilding wax I've also um, added some luscious from indigo blue in the gold just dripped it on and let it run into all the cracks of the angel so there's that there uh, I've used some uh, transparent crackle which I've then used an oil paint in brown just to uh, highlight the cracks and you can just about see them there then the back is just as it would have been before I added any of the layers so I've had some rice paper some stencils some stamps and a bit of dry brushing as well a bit of gilding wax in gold I've added as well so that that's my finished project I've really hoped you've enjoyed crafting along with me today in my tutorial any questions please leave a message down below and um, I will answer them um, as soon as I see them if you'd like to give a thumbs up for this video would be lovely and a subscribe I'm also on Facebook and Pinterest and I have a blog so uh, I'll leave the links at the end of this video thanks again for crafting along with me today i really hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you next time bye